All right, welcome back everyone. It's No High here, and we are back with a Skyrim video, our first Skyrim guide video. And in this video, we are going to be looking at how to get Gold Brand, which is a unique sword that is included in your Creation Club content that you got if you bought the Anniversary Edition or you upgraded from the Skyrim Special Edition. So without further ado, let's hop right into the how to start the quest and how to get gold brand. All right, so first thing you're going to want to do is make your way to the Sacklium of Bohethia. I think that's how you say that. I might be getting it wrong. I might be getting it very wrong. But basically, you just want to make your way to right here on the map. It's to the east of Windhelm. It's very easy to find and it's very easy to get to as well. But once you make your way to the shrine, you're going to make your way in up the steps and you're going to see this fighting pit off to the left. In this fighting pit, there will be a dead body. You're going to want to search that dead body and pick up the journal on it. Once you pick up the journal, you're going to want to read it. This journal will then tell you to go to Sivdur's Respite, which is located right here on the map, right to the north of Windhelm, very close to where you just were. Make your way to right there on the map. It's a little cave area. Make your way inside of this area. And then once you're inside, there are going to be three enemies that you're going to want to deal with very quickly. Very easy to deal with, at least for me. I have a level 50 character. So we deal with the three enemies. After that, you're just going to want to make your way to right over here to the right side. And read more of this person's notes. Once you read these notes, it will tell you that you now need to go to the College of Winterhold, specifically the Arcanium, to find even more of her notes. The College of Winterhold is located right here on the map. It's actually pretty close to where we've been doing everything else. It's right pretty much to the north of Windhelm as well, right up here in Winterhold. Make your way there, make your way inside, and you're going to make want to make your way to the library section and to find more of her research notes. After you read this set of research notes then you can you need to go find an amulet and you need to go find a skull so the amulet is located right here on the map here in white run i'm pretty sure everybody knows where white run is here in skyrim but i'm going to show you just in case it's pretty much right in the middle of the map kind of close to uh wind Helm, kind of close to you know like winter hold and stuff like that but you're going to want to make your way to white run make your way over here to the house of clan battleborn and then once you make your way inside, we're going to be looking for this little kid. I forget his name. When I see it here in a second, I will remember it. But we're going to be looking for this little kid, and this uh, kid actually ends up having the amulet that we are needing. Uh, the kid's name is right here. It is Lars. There you go. I forgot his name. Uh, Lars Battleborn is the kid you're going to want to talk to, and you're going to want to either persuade, intimidate, or buy the amulet off of him don't worry the amulet if you decide to buy it like I did it only costs 10 gold to get it off of him so it's literally nothing 10 gold is literally nothing after you have this amulet from Lars you're gonna to want to make your way to the shroud hearth burrow located right here on the map it is located really close to Iverstead if you are really early on in Skyrim you have probably been to Iverstead as well it's close to Whiterun it's close to Rift and it's right over there in that general area where we've kind of been during this whole little bit of a quest line but basically make your way right here on the map like I said right next to Iverstead and once you get there it's a little tomb area all you're gonna to want to do is make your way inside once inside, you will have to figure out a little bit of a door puzzle to get both doors to open at the same time. It's pretty easy to do. Once you figure that out, make your way through the two doorways. Make your way right over here, pull this chain, open up the other gates, and watch out for traps. There are two little traps you need to watch out for. Open this door. There's a fire trap. Just walk through that. doesn't do that much damage. And once you walk through this wooden set of double doors, you will find a dragon priest. You will need to kill this dragon priest, and once you kill him, he will drop the skull you are needing in order to get into this doorway. So basically, what you're going to want to do after you pick up the skull is you're going to want to make your way back to that first tomb that we went to over there near the shrine, which is Sivdur's Respite, if you forgot the name. Make your way back inside of this little cave slash tomb. Once you are inside... You can make your way over here to the two pedestals 
that are over here by this door and you're going to want to place the amulet on the left and you're going to place the skull on the right pedestal and once you place both of them uh, once you place the first one the door will slide and then once you place the second one the other one will slide open and you can make your way inside once inside you will have to deal with a couple of draugr overlords not that difficult for me maybe a little bit more difficult for you they may even be a lower class of enemy for you depending on what level you do this but basically make your way through this little dungeon takes no time at all maybe 30 seconds maybe 30 seconds to a minute to get through the whole thing and make your way in here there will be a chest through this iron door but the thing that you really want is sitting right up here on this little like table it is gold brand there it is right there 102 damage 3413 value it doesn't actually do 102 damage for everyone i have on a bunch of boosting armor and i have a one-handed skill of, i think of about 87 at this particular moment on this character so that's why it deals that much damage I will be showing a little bit of gameplay here in a minute of it with without my armor on and just my one-handed skill and that's it I won't have any of my boosting armor rings necklace anything on just my one-handed skill of about 87 I will be showing a little bit of that but yeah first I want to show it just show it off in general basically what this weapon does is it will burn the target for 30 damage and if the target is on fire it will take even more damage from the weapon uh, as you can see here I walk up to my first enemy that I used on on this thing and straight up chopped his head off uh, yeah this weapon is pretty solid in my opinion kind of reminds me of Dawnbreaker in that way that it sets enemies on fire uh, it's a very cool weapon it has sort of like that samurai type look to it samurai sword uh, I really like the weapon. You will need, you know, soul gems and stuff to keep it charged up, but that probably won't be a problem for you. Or it, once you get into the late game, you really don't even have to worry about soul gems too much because you pretty much will always have them. But yeah, as promised, also here's a little bit of gameplay with none of my boosting armor or anything, just my skill. Without all of that, it only has about 43 damage at this particular moment that I'm using it. And as you can see, I'm sorry this white run guard had to die. But we just had to show it off, and he did indeed die. Nazim can also die as well. No Cloud District today. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty solid weapon. I definitely recommend you go out and give it a shot, especially if you are doing some one-handed builds. Like I said, if you enjoy Dawnbreaker, the sword Dawnbreaker, you'll probably enjoy this sword a pretty good bit as well. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got in this video. Feel free to drop a like, subscribe, and feel free to comment as well if you feel like doing that. Uh, feel free to let me know if you if you enjoyed this little bit of a format I did for the Skyrim video. It's a pretty typical format for a Skyrim guide video, I feel like. But let me know if there's anything I can improve on or anything, because that's this is the first time I've done a guide on Skyrim. But yeah, subscribe, leave a like, drop a comment, and I'll see you guys on the next one.